are thinking about a Regency lady's cap, uh, this might be the sort of thing that many people would imagine. But of course, you know better than that, don't you? Because the Regency lady's cap can take many forms. Uh, it was not just the older ladies who had them, but younger ones as well. Now, most of the time the caps were worn either underneath a bonnet or they were worn by themselves at home in order to keep all the hair tidy. I mean, Jane Austen was a great uh, famous user of caps because it meant that she didn't have to do much to her hair. Um, so we were interested in finding a, a way of making a cap for Roz, which would be appropriate. So I thought to myself, well, I wonder if we can buy anything in an old shop. So I started going round the um, charity shops, seeing if I could pick up some old lace. And I found this. It's a lace cap, beautifully made, hand stitched, and in fact has the same design as many Regency caps that you'd see. Actually, it is a Regency ladies cap, dating back to about 1820. Now, I'm not saying that you're going to find one of these in every shop that you go into. I was supremely lucky, but as I was looking around, I found something almost identical in the Bowes Museum in North Yorkshire in England, which confirmed the approximate dating of it. I'm not providing a pattern as such, but a schematic of the construction, just paper cutouts. You can then make it to your own size. The majority of the panels are made from a ribbed cotton lawn. Here are the four panels making the bobbles. They're ruched and gathered with minute stitching. Between them is a broderie anglaise white work tape. I've looked in shops and you can actually get a very similar modern version ready made. There is a similar um, tape of broderie anglaise which starts to pass over the top of the crown following which there is a ruched panel and then another strip of the broderie anglaise. On that broad strip, the ribbing of the material goes front to rear, but on the thinner front strip, the ribbing goes around the top of the crown from side to side. This view shows how all the pieces are brought together until you're ready to put on your frill around the side. Note that at the front there is almost a lappet formed. The outer laced frill is made of a fine cotton voile. To the outside of this is added a strip of lace. The frill with its lace goes all around the outside of the bonnet. There are two ribbons for tying the cap. Uh, these are made out of a fine lawn, uh, the end of which is cut at a slant and then is trimmed with lace. The tapes are fixed onto the front of the bonnet at the point where the lappet appears. And here is the end with its trimming. The seams over the rim of the face and the back of the neck have drawstrings. So there we are. Ros enjoys wearing her cap, but only on high days and holidays and for videos.